on December 29th, 2016 at 2257 Eastern Standard Time, a Cessna CJ-4, it's a Citation Jet, November 614 Sierra Bravo, was destroyed during an in-flight collision with Lake Erie shortly after takeoff from runway 24 right at the Burke Lakefront Airport in Cleveland, Ohio. M0A Online Ground School members, M0A Nation, Jason here. Welcome back now into the third part of our accent analysis series. I know last week uh, I shared it with you. Uh, I, I don't enjoy talking about accents, especially ones that involve fatalities. This one, as you can imagine, does. Um, but I also believe we'd be doing those, those involved, the pilot, the, the passengers, a disservice if we didn't take the time to learn from these accents here as well. Before we dive back into learning about this accident, and I can imagine your head spinning, how did this actually happen? A collision with Lake Erie in a CJ-4, a very, very nice uh, single pilot citation jet. How does this happen? We'll talk about that here in just one second. I want to remind you, m0acontest.com. We are giving away a survival kit very similar to the one I use here in 23 Mike Zulu to one lucky winner. It is the year of 23 Mike Zulu. So uh, all this year we're just giving away amazing things each and every month. Last month it was an iPad. This year it is a survival kit. This is the one from 23 Mike Zulu with our spot beacon and everything else. And like I shared in the last video, this literally lives underneath, in my case, the co-pilot seat. Um, kind of velcroed down there so it doesn't slide and, and wedged in there. If we had an accent, it's handle forward so I can reach under the seat, grab it, and, and we're gone. Um, out of there, this thing floats. Obviously, it's a nice Pelican case. All of that um, as well. So m0acontest.com, um, some really neat things we're gonna be adding in there. And I'll be sharing that, uh, announcing the winner live at the end of this month during the big live stream. Uh, dates and everything else are available there for you and time so you can start setting your calendar invites for that. Let's dive back into this accent here and then I wanna actually take you up in 2-3 Mike Zulu because this is a spatial disorientation accident. Um, sorry to let the cat out of the bag here. But I want to, so this will be a little bit of a longer video. I wanna end this video in 2-3 Mike Zulu where I take up actually a, a great uh, young kid, 15 years old, getting ready to solo. Actually, by the time you watch this video, he may have already uh, soloed on his 16th birthday. So very excited for him with that. But I used him to demonstrate spatial disorientation. And, and we'll see that and I'll show you how, how I teach spatial disorientation. It's taught two ways. I believe there's one way better than the other. So stay tuned to the end of that video for that. But let's get it back in this accent. So at 2255, the pilot was cleared for takeoff. He was instructed to turn right to a head of 330, maintain 2000 feet after departure. Pretty standard. The pilot acknowledges clearance. At 2256, the engine power increased for takeoff, and 15 seconds later, the airplane became airborne. At 2257, the automated voice uh, enunciated altitude. A second altitude enunciated just 14 seconds later. Then a sound similar to a decrease in engine power was recorded. Two seconds later, the enhanced ground proximity warning system provided an excessive bank angle warning. Next, about two seconds after the bank angle warning, the tower controller instructed the pilot to contact departure control. This is interesting. The pilot replied to departure 614 Sierra Bravo. However, that communication was not received by the tower controller. We just have it in the recording, suggesting the pilot didn't have the microphone push to talk button depressed, but he was talking out loud, but not hitting the button. At 2257, the controller again attempted to contact the pilot. Two seconds after the controller's transmission, the ground warning system provided a sync rate warning to the pilot. Um, the pilot uh, then responded, 614 Sierra Bravo. But this was again not received because they don't believe he was actually pushing the push to talk button. Beginning at 2257, the ground warning system provided seven pull up warnings at 1.6 second intervals until the end of the cockpit voice warning. How does this happen? Right after takeoff. You see, this is marginal VFR, which turned into IMC after takeoff. The pilot took off a right turn into IMC with a lake in front of him, 
at nighttime. I don't know if you've ever flown over a large body of water at night and then add instrument conditions to it, but spatial disorientation can sneak up on you. You'll see in the upcoming footage here, daytime, blue skies, blue Gulf of Mexico, how spatial disorientation can set in. Now add to it this pilot, an accomplished pilot, but this pilot only had 56.5 hours in the CJ4 and actually had just added his single pilot type rating in it. He owned a Citation Mustang, of which he had 372 hours in. However, uh, based on records and interviews with family members, the pilot had reportedly been awake for the past 17 hours. Perhaps fatigue was an issue with this. The NTSB also concluded there was some negative transference, which is where I learn where one thing is correct for one airplane, right? My, my flaps are here in this airplane, but in this airplane, my flaps are in a different spot. Negative transference is one thing that's right in one airplane is wrong in another. They believe from the Citation Mustang, uh, a smaller light jet, to stepping up to the CJ4, which is really at the, at the max for single pilot operations. Much after that, in the Citation series, it's, it's two pilots required. Um, there was some negative transference including confusion with the autopilot. Uh, the NTSB, again, believes that perhaps the pilot had engaged the autopilot or thought he had engaged the autopilot, but didn't. Because how the autopilot is engaged in a Citation Mustang is very different than in a CJ4. We're also, in some cases, talking Proline, Collins Proline avionics versus Garmin avionics in the Mustang as well. The NTSB also cited that the inability to monitor the instruments appropriately. A professional pilot uh, owned uh, a, a Citation jet, flying a different Citation jet, and these accidents still occur. Something like spatial disorientation. And let me tell you, spatial disorientation is nothing to mess around with. I went ahead up to the airplane, and I want to introduce you to John Franco, uh, who uh, at the time of this recording was 15 years old, getting ready for his first solo on his 16th birthday, and this was also one of his first uh, times to experience spatial disorientation. And I really worked him hard and put him through the ringer. So let's go ahead and let's cut to that clip. All right, M Zero Nation up in the airplane, two through Mike Zulu with the, the newest pilot here, John Franco. He's 15 and he's gonna solo on his 16th birthday. So very, very cool. Uh, uh, what's the goal, by the way? Career in aviation, or what are you thinking? Uh, I was thinking either uh, private pilot for jets, like maybe net jets, or like maybe commercial for Frontier, Delta. They, I like they're that. making really good money now. I, I like it, my friend. You Getting this early start is so beneficial. So I chose John Franco, because he's getting ready for his solo, and we wanted to illustrate some spatial disorientation. And I want to show you really the two ways uh, to practice spatial disorientation. I personally believe one way is better than the other. Now, the one thing John Franco doesn't know is we, I brought him up here, and you're probably saying, well, where are the foggles, or where's the hood that he's going to wear? Well, let me show you something. John Franco, will you do me a favor and turn a right turn to 270, please, and you're clear to the right. All right, 270. So we're pretty spoiled out here. We've got the blue of the sky and the blue of the ocean. I'm going to vote you don't need any foggles on a day like today. Now, here's something else that you forget about, those of you who fly and land uh, you know, without a large body of water around you. Look at this synthetic vision. The blue of the water, the blue of the sky. It can really add to tricking you from a spatial disorientation standpoint. You look out, John Franco, it is blue on blue. Yep. Right. If you've ever studied or seen my video I did the JFK Junior accident, this is what happened. You need to be trusting your instruments at this point and scan your instruments. So I'm going to first show you how most people do spatial disorientation, and it's where the CFI flies the airplane. And I don't agree with this method. I'll show you a better method afterwards, but I want to show you both so you decide. So John Franco, uh, if I could, uh, my flight controls, please. Your flight controls. All right, I have the flight controls. All right, so I'm going to go ahead, and John Franco, I would like you, please, to close your eyes and put your chin down to your chest. All right. I All right, and you. when I say go, John Franco, I want you to put your left ear to your left shoulder. Ready and go. All right. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to really mess with the vestibular system a little bit uh, to get them thinking we're kind of all over the place and what we're doing flying ways, moving that fluid around that inner ear. And this is how most CFIs do it. I think CFIs like doing this because it's an excuse to let them fly. CFIs, just hear me on that, right? 
Hey, John Franco, when I say to, I want you to put your right ear to your right shoulder and go. All right. And then we turn, <laughs> right? So we're doing all this here. And then what we're going to do is, John Franco, I'm going to give you one more exercise, and then I'm going to say the words recover. When I say recover, the first thing you're going to do is look at your instrument panel. In particular, the first and most important instrument, I believe, is the airspeed. If we're too slow, give it power and lower the nose. If we're too fast, take power out, level the wings, and then slowly baby it up. John Franco, without losing your headset, please, I'd like you to take the back of your head to the back of the seat. Ready? Go. And Whoa. John Franco, when you're ready, go ahead and recover, please. All right. Your airplane. Yeah, and, and look at the instruments and fly. All right, recover. Whoa. Give it some Holy. power. Give it some power. And get us back to level. Back to level. Back Maybe to level. Trust your instruments. Easy. Trust your instruments. Yeah. Your nose and down. Pick that nose up just a little bit. Good. Ooh. That'll mess with you, huh? Yeah, yeah, I'm a little dizzy from that. All right. All right, my flight controls for a second here. All right, your flight controls. I got the flight controls. You just keep focused on flying, right? Yep. I'm, I'm just, you just keep watching those instruments here. I want to just show you some things. Right. Look at that nice kind of standard rate turn working its way across that horizon line here. But you see how the blue of the sky and the blue ocean messes with you. Yes. Now, ground school members, I'm not always crazy about, uh, about that method because you're flying the airplane. Here's how spatial disorientation really works. All right, John Franco, we're gonna, I'm gonna level the airplane here and I'm gonna give it back to you. So you have the flight controls. All right, I have the flight controls. You have the flight controls. What I'd like you to do now, John Franco, is I want you to keep flying the airplane, but close your eyes. Oh. And I'm gonna trust you, just close your eyes. Let's bring a little bit of power back. RPM is a little high. All right. There you go. And I want you, close your eyes, and you fly the airplane. Keep one hand on that throttle. Right. You fly the airplane, okay? And give me what you think, eyes closed, okay, yeah. and you give me what you think is a uh, standard rate turn to the left, please. Uh, I think a standard rate turn to the left would be 30 degrees. 30 degrees? Wow, that's a big standard rate turn. Right, Are you sure? 20 or 15. 15 sounds better. But give me just, again, what? Uh, just tell me when we're turning left, standard rate. That's all I'm asking. You tell me Even when you're altitude. established in a left turn. All right, uh, let me see if I <laughs> if I can do this. I think uh, you can do whatever you put your mind to. I can't tell. That you I can't tell, so you don't know. Right. We could be up and down right now, huh? Uh, yeah, for all I know. All right, give me a standard rate turn to the left still, please. I, I'm still uh, waiting for this left turn. This oh, wow. magical left turn that. hasn't happened yet. Is that standard rate? I feel like we're up and down. All right, when you're ready, go ahead and recover. All so right. look up and fix it, fix it, fix it, right, fix it, fix it. Oh, we are not at a, <laughs> we are not at a 15 degree. That was like a 40. <laughs> That's why I had to recover before you got to a 60. All right. Oh my gosh. All right, John Franco, get yourself level and feeling good again here. Let me know when you're ready for another one. All right, and this is to the right with my eyes closed? No, no, no. I'll, I'll, or just, uh... We'll just close your eyes. We're just gonna fly the airplane, okay? All right. So eyes closed? Gonna go eyes closed. Are your eyes really closed? Yes. Uh oh, <laughs> just checking, I'm just checking. Yeah, yep. When you're ready, give me a climbing right turn, please. A climbing right turn? Climbing right turn, All yes. All right. Uh-huh. Right. You can start that right turn whenever you're ready. I'm starting. <laughs> I'm just teasing you. <laughs> I changed my mind. Let's make it a climbing left turn. A climbing left turn. All right. Leaving I altitude. Uh, but I can't see, so it's a little hard. Climbing left turn. Uh, I think I'm... Um, you think you're good? A 270. I see the sun coming right into my retinas. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yeah. All right, a climbing left turn, huh? Okay. I hear, do you hear the engine speeding up? Yeah, I think we're... Straight. Why don't you go ahead and recover real quick? Recover. Open your eyes. You're in a diving left hand yeah. turn. Wow. That power back. That power back. That power back. Good. Woo. That'll uh, do it to you, huh? Yeah. We are up 160 feet. Yeah. Yeah. I have to level back down. There you it, go. It feels so little. Yeah. That it is, doesn't feel like much. That's that's a lot. Wow. But it is. All right. Get us nice and level here. And then we're going to say bye to everybody. So what did you learn from spatial disorientation today, John Franco? Well, I learned that uh, 
Well, closing your eyes and flying is a lot different than looking at your instruments when it's all blue. Yes, that's very, very true. Closing your yeah. eyes and flying, it, it's not recommended, honestly. Yeah, no, it's not. But I think the real lesson is that spatial disorientation, you need to learn to adjust to that. And 40 degrees is not 15. Well, we have to learn to trust our instruments. And you have to learn, if you, you're a VFR-only pilot getting ready to solo here, if you inadvertently flew into a cloud, it's no different than closing your eyes and flying. It's the, it's the same thing. You don't have that outside reference. That's why I took you out to the coast today uh, to show you the blue of the sky and the blue of the ocean. The same thing happens with that. And, and this is why we look at aviation accidents that relate to spatial disorientation. And it's not just, you know, pre-solo pre student pilots that make these mistakes. It is seasoned experts that make these mistakes as well. So listen, uh, we can't wait to read all your comments down below this video uh, on uh, YouTube, on Facebook, on M0A.com. Have a blessed, abundant, outstanding rest of your day. What's the most important thing, John Franco? A good pilot is always learning. That's right. We'll see you guys.